Hello, this video is designed to provide instructors with an overview of Turnitin's PeerMark tool. The Turnitin PeerMark tool is an area where students can submit papers for review. An originality report, which checks the paper against other online resources or papers within the Turnitin database, will be produced. The instructor can also use Grademark and Turnitin rubrics to mark up the paper. The PeerMark tool, however, allows the students to review the submitted papers, add markups, and answer questions set forth by the instructor. It is important to note that PeerMark will be set up through the content area. Turnitin submissions not using PeerMarks will still go through the assignments area as normal. If PeerMark is being used, however, the setup, submission, and grading process will have to occur via the content area. There are two parts to setting up the PeerMark assignment. First, the instructor must create the area for the student to turn in their papers. Next, the instructor will need to turn on the PeerMark feature so that students can review those papers. The instructor may choose to turn on the PeerMark immediately so that students can begin reviews as soon as they submit. It is suggested, however, that the instructor wait to turn on the PeerMark component until after all the papers have been initially submitted. To begin, the instructor will navigate to the content area and select the appropriate module for the peer review. It might be that it fits in an existing module or perhaps a new module needs to be created. The instructor will then choose existing activities and turn it in peer mark. At this point, they are creating the assignment area where the students submit their papers. They should give the assignment a title and instructions. This might include what the assignment is about, how long it should be, if citations should be included, etc. The instructor will then need to put in the highest grade the student can make on the assignment, such as 100 points. The start date will be the date that the students can begin to submit the assignment. The due date is the last time the student can submit the assignment. The feedback release date is when any grade marks or comments that the teacher has provided on the paper will be available to students. If you want students to have access to their feedback as soon as you grade, then you should input today's date. All of this thus far has followed suit with Turnitin Feedback Studio's functionality. Now choose Optional Settings. Here you will select if you want the paper to be kept in the Turnitin repository so that future papers will be checked against it. This is highly encouraged. You can also choose to allow for late submissions after the due date that we just selected. Please note, however, that once you turn on the, the peer mark feature, papers submitted afterward will not be included in the peer mark process. In this case, it's probably best to not allow for late submissions. Choose what the paper will be compared against. All are suggested. You can then choose when the similarity reports should be generated. It is suggested to choose the second option, which allows the originality reports to be generated upon submission. It will also allow students to resubmit and receive a report up until the due date. Then choose Submit. Now that the assignment has been created, the instructor will need to make a few more edits to the settings. Select the name of the content item and choose Settings in the upper right corner. Most of this information has already been filled out. Here, however, you notice that you can turn on peer mark. Doing so will allow the students to immediately begin reviewing after they submit their own paper. If you are randomly assigning papers to students to view, however, this isn't the best option. Instead, to ensure true randomization, the instructor should turn on peer mark after all of the files have been submitted. Under optional settings, the instructor can choose to add a Turnitin rubric to grade by. Most importantly, however, the instructor will need to select Allow Students to View Similarity Scores in order for them to be able to see the matches. You might also choose to save these settings for future use. Now submit. As a student, I would navigate to the appropriate content area and choose the name of the assignment. I would then choose to upload my assignment. This works best if the student uploads the file from his or her computer. 
If the instructor plans to randomly assign papers for peer marking, make sure that the student doesn't include their name in the paper or in the file name. After submitting, the student can see their file. Within a few minutes, they should also be able to see their originality percentage. By clicking on this percentage, the student will enter the Turnitin Feedback Studio. This will allow the student to view the matches via color coding. The instructor can also grade the assignment in this area. He or she may of course want to do so after peer marking has occurred. The instructor would choose the icon under grade to open the originality report. He or she can then use comments or quick marks to add feedback on the paper. He or she can also use a Turnitin rubric to grade the paper. Notice that the grade will auto-populate into the Turnitin content area. This also goes into the D2L gradebook. If you have used the Turnitin rubric, this will also populate. Again, it is suggested that the instructor complete the grading process after peer marking has occurred, however. Now that the students have submitted their papers, the instructor can now choose to turn on peer marking. This will allow the students in the class to see each other's papers, create markups or comments, as well as answer questions that you've provided. Again, if you plan to randomly assign papers, make sure that the student doesn't include their name in the paper or in the file name. The instructor will still be able to see whose account the file was submitted under. The instructor would navigate back to the peer mark assignment in the content area and select it. He or she would then be able to see the files that have been submitted as well as their similarity score. Choose Settings and Enable Peer Mark and Submit. This will turn on peer marking. Now that peer marking is on, the instructor will see two more tabs. After choosing Peer Mark Setup, the instructor would fill in the title and instructions for the peer marking or review assignment. Remember, this is different from the assignment itself. It is giving instructions for what students are supposed to do when they are marking up other papers. If you choose to grade their markups, which is suggested, then you want to include a max points available for that. Remember, this is also different than the assignment itself. These points are given for how well the student reviews other papers. Note that this score, unlike the actual grade for the assignment, does not automatically flow over to the D2L gradebook. It would have to be manually input after a special grade item for the peer marking was created. The instructor will then need to give a time frame of when the students will be allowed to view others' papers. Also, the instructor will need to note when the peer review will be available to the author of the paper. One might not release the feedback until the due date of the, the reviews. The other option would be to release the feedback as soon as it is created. Under Additional Settings, the instructor should choose to not 
award maximum points on review. This would give the student points for completing the review regardless of how well the review is crafted. Additionally, the student probably should not see the names of their peers during the review process. The instructor may choose to allow those students who didn't submit a paper to participate in the reviews. Next, the instructor should choose if the papers will be automatically and randomly assigned for review or if the student should be able to pick the papers they want to review. Note, if you have not allowed students to see the names of others, they won't know whose paper they are picking. If you have allowed them to see the names, however, they will be able to see whose paper they are selecting. Instructors can also choose to have the students complete the review process for their own paper. This might be beneficial as they are asked to critically review their own writing based upon the prompts. Then choose to save and continue. Next, the instructor should choose the Peer Mark Questions tab. This is where he or she will create the prompts for the students to answer. The idea is to include questions that will help them to critically review and analyze their peers' paper. The instructor can choose from pre-made questions by selecting Add from Library and Sample Library. Notice that some of the prompts are scales while some are free response. The instructor should select as necessary and choose Add Selected Questions. These questions can be edited by choosing the blue pencil icon. He or she can also add unique questions by choosing Add Question. The instructor can choose to create a free response or scale question. With the free response, he or she can determine a minimum number of words to be included when answering the question. With a scale, the instructor can choose the size of the scale as well as what qualifies as the lowest point and the highest point. If the instructor anticipates using this set of questions again, he or she may choose to save to the library. Later, the instructor can then choose this set from the Add to Library area. After adding the questions, the instructor will need to distribute the papers to be reviewed. The Distribution tab will show if and where the papers have been assigned for review. System Assigned means that the papers were randomly assigned. In some cases, the instructor might want to randomize most of the assignments but determine some specific reviews. This might be in cases where the instructor would like a weak writer to review the paper of a particularly strong writer to perhaps pick up some tips. In that case, the instructor should choose the name of the student who pay, whose paper needs to be reviewed, which is the strong writer. He or she would then choose the individual who should review the paper, which is the weak writer. The instructor can make a two-way pair if he or she likes by having a pair review each other's papers, but a one-way review, like previously discussed, can also be the setup. The goal, however, is to make sure that each person has at least a forced, which is manually paired, or a system assigned, which is randomly paired, review. Now the instructor can choose to create peer mark assignment. To complete the peer reviews, the student should navigate back to the content and select the name of the assignment. Unlike before, there will be a peer mark reviews tab. The student should then choose the peer mark review assignment. Notice that the student doesn't see the author's name if that has not been allowed. The student will also see their own paper if the instructor has selected a self-review. The student will then choose Review to start the process.
The student will see the paper on the left side of the page. The questions will be located on the right. Notice that some questions have a minimum number of words to ensure that students adequately explain themselves. In addition to answering the questions, the student can mark up the paper similar to Quick Marks. The student should cho choose tools to access the text, highlight, and composition marks toolbars. He or she can then drag and drop the notes on the paper. Clicking anywhere on the page will allow the student to leave a typed comment. Notice that the progress for completion of the review is being tracked in the upper left corner. The student can save and return later if need be. When finished, the student should choose Cement. Note that once a student submits, he or she can review what was submitted, but edits cannot be made. If the student has received feedback from their peers, and if that feedback has been made available, then he or she can see it by choosing the Received Feedback button in the top right. This will allow the student to see the feedback that was left to them, including the comments on the paper and the answered questions. Notice that the student does not see who reviewed their paper. If more than one person reviewed their paper, the student can move to the next review via the arrows. The instructor can review the peer reviews by going to the content area and selecting the assignment. Next, select Peer Mark Review tabs and select the Peer Mark Review assignment. You will be able to see the student list and how many peer reviews have been submitted. You will also be able to see how many reviews the individual has received. To look at the peer reviews the student completed, select the number under Submitted. You will then see a list of whose paper was reviewed. Select it to look at that review. You will be able to see any markups left on the paper by the reviewer. You can also see the answered questions. You will be able to see if the student completed the review based upon the percentage. Remember, you cannot grade the review from here. If you want to give a grade for the review, you will need to make a separate gradebook column and input the grade manually. The instructor might also include the review as part of a rubric used to grade the entire assignment. When the instructor goes to grade the paper itself under the assignment inbox area, he or she might account for the peer reviews the student conducted. To look at the reviews that particular student received, the instructor should choose the number under Received. This will let the instructor see what others said about the paper. Use the arrows at the top to, remove, to move through the reviews. Finally, the instructor can choose to provide a review him or herself. Choose the icon under Review. The instructor can then use the markups and answer the questions, just like the student reviewers. The student will not know that it was the instructor who conducted the review. This completes the tutorial of how instructors and students can use Turnitin PeerMark within Brightspace by D2L.